you back with us tonight to worship again. We're going to start tonight with, I know whom I have believed. Let's stand together. I know not why God's wondrous grace to me he hath made known. I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know not how this saving faith to me have a prayer. Brother Ronnie Lusk, would you lead us tonight? Amen. You can be seated. Kathy, would you hit the button again on that back projector? It didn't come on. Thank you. Just want to make sure I sing the same verses as everybody else does. Not that it matters. I rarely do anyway. But we're glad you're here tonight, and uh, I'm not going to read the announcements. You can see those there in the bulletin. And uh, if you, uh, as Brother Ronnie prayed, if there's someone that you know that uh, would like to apply for the uh, youth pastor position, then uh, we're accepting resumes for that. And uh, they can email it or snail mail it, as they say nowadays, or just bring it by the office and leave it with us. So either any of that would be fine. Um, we're uh, glad that you're here tonight and pleased that you're here to worship the Lord. Let's uh, continue. Footsteps of Jesus. Siloam 
Jerusalem's fountain helping all we footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow we will follow the steps of Jesus where'er they go then at last when on high he sees us our journey done we will rest where the steps of jesus and at his throne footprints of jesus that make the pathway glow we will follow the steps of Jesus where they go. Don't worry about it. Just leave it be. I think there's a button pressed on the floor down there. Somebody kicked it. All right. Keep worshiping. To God be the glory. God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord. But now I am found. 
crowd was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed through many dangers toils and snares I have already come tis great hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. When we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, praise than when we first begun. A cappella just sing praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Amen. Webster. Take your Bible to Genesis chapter 20. Genesis chapter 20. We've been following along with Abraham. We're going to jump across chapter 19. Well, we kind of touched on the story of Sodom, and we kind of know that story, and it's not a lot of Abraham there, so we will jump over the story of that chapter into the 20th chapter uh, tonight, and and. And when we get here, we, Abraham's been on a, we'll call it a, a high, a spiritual high for a period of time. And, and, uh, but the passage that we come to tonight, it represents a, a failure uh, in, in his life. And, you know, Abraham, it, it still doesn't change the fact that Abraham is one of God's choice servants. And, and if you remember, if you recall several chapters ago, and I'm sure it was well back before Christmas, back in the 12th chapter of Genesis, the the Bible told us a story there beginning in about the 10th verse, after God had spoken to Abram in the beginning portions of that chapter, where he said, told him to get out of his country, away from his family, and away from your father's house to a land that I'll show you, and I'll make you a great nation and bless you, and all those things. Well, we know that after God made that announcement to Abraham, the Scripture tells us that he went down into Egypt. Well, when, when he went down there, and, and, and we've seen in that portion of Scripture that that, was, that represented a downtime in his life, there are going to be some similarities between the event of chapter 12 and the events here that we find in, in chapter 20. And, and listen, it, it's, never, it's never pleasant, it's never fun, to see failure in the life of one of God's people. And, and Abraham is, is one of those. He's one of God's choice leaders, one of his, one of his children. But I'm grateful, and, and, I'll, I'm, and I'm, I'm going to tell you why I'm grateful for this, but I'm grateful that God didn't sweep the failures of his children and his servants under the rug like they never happened. 
but he put them out there so that we could see them. Now you say, well, why in the world would you be glad that that happened? Because I struggle with things. I'm sure that you don't, but there are things in life that I struggle with. There are things and, and there are sins that we, that we struggle with, and, and sometimes we struggle with the same sin time after time after time after time after time. Some of you are looking at me like you have no idea what I'm talking about, but for the, for the regular sinful person, we, we, we do that, and, and, and we struggle with things. Well, Abraham, one of God's choice servants, he's, he's, he struggles with some things, and, and we're going to see that. Now, I, I would like to tell you when we get to a certain age, or we get to a certain amount of years in the Christian walk with God and so on and so forth, that we come to the place where we no longer struggle. But I believe I can say tonight, and Brother Palmer's not here to verify this, but I believe he would if he were here, the struggle doesn't end at a certain age. Brother Palmer's 99, and I believe he would tell you that there's a struggle with some things when you when you're just a few weeks or a couple of months away from turning 100 years old, that the struggle is still there. So what we need is this. We don't need somebody to get up and tell us that when you get to a certain place, the struggles are all going to go away. What we need is we need not just somebody to tell us, but we need from the Word of God, we need some, as the old hymn says, we need some blessed assurance that there is hope in the midst of, of our failures. There is hope in the midst of our failures. Now, I, we're, we're going to read, I'm just going to read this entire chapter from the outset, and then I want to, I want to point out to you four principles. We're not just going to follow verse by verse through this, but I want to share with you four principles that I believe that will speak to us and to speak to needs maybe in your life and needs maybe in my life uh, about this thing dealing with sin and the saint of God. It begins in verse 1. Abraham journeyed from there to the south and dwelt between Kadesh and Shur and stayed in Gerar. Now Abraham said of Sarah, his wife, she's my sister. And Abimelech, king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Indeed, you are a, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, will you slay a righteous nation also? Did he, did he not say to me, she's my sister? And, and she even, she herself said, he's my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocence of my hands, I've done this. And God said to him in a dream, Yes, I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart, for I also withheld you from sinning against me. Therefore, I did not let you touch her. Now, therefore, restore the man's wife, for he is, for he is a prophet, and he will pray for you, and you shall live. But if you do not restore her, know that you shall surely die, and you, sh you and all who are yours." So Abimelech rose up early in the morning, called all his servants, and told all these things in their hearing. And the men were very much afraid. And Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, What have you done to us? How have I offended you that, that you have brought on me on, on, and on my kingdom a great sin? You have done deeds to me that ought not to be done. Then Abimelech said to Abraham, What did you have in view that you have done this thing? So Abraham said in verse 11, Because I thought surely the fear of God is, is not in this place, and they will kill me on account of my wife. But indeed she is truly my sister. She is the, the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother, and she became my wife. And it came to pass when God caused me to wander from my father's house that I said to her this is your kindness that you should do for me in every place wherever we go say of me he's my brother then in verse 14 Abimelech took sheep oxen and male and female servants and gave them to Abraham and he restored Sarah his wife to him and Abimelech said see my land is before you dwell where it pleases you then to Sarah he said 
Behold, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. Indeed, this vindicates you before all who are with you and before everybody. Thus she was rebuked. So Abraham said to God, and God healed Abimelech, his wife, and his female servants. Then they bore children. For the Lord had closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. So let, let me give you these principles tonight that I think that we need to be aware of. Here's number one. If you have your outline, follow along, fill it out. Sin does not have an expiration date. Sin does not have an expiration date. You can go home tonight and you can pull almost everything out of your refrigerator that you purchased in a store and there'll be a date stamped on it someplace that says this product is best if used before February whatever okay and now it's not necessarily going to be bad on that date but it's best to use it beforehand well everything has an expiration date well listen sin doesn't have an expiration date Sin is something that you deal with as a, as a believer in our walk with God. If we're teenagers, we deal with sin, don't we? Can you remember that? Precious memories. It's been a long time for some of us, but, but we can remember doing that. We can remember as young adults, as young married couples and husbands and wives, and, and in that particular period of time in our life there was there was sin that had to be dealt with and when you get to be 55 or 56 I, I I can speak this out of the truth of my heart there's still sin that has to be dealt with and and and, and dealt with in our life and and I'm just speaking from testimony of others that as as you go along as far as this road travels there's sin that has to be dealt with even through those times. Well, if we think about old Abraham here, in this passage of Scripture, he's 100 years old when this event occurs. He's 100 years old. And now, when, when he goes down to Egypt the first time, I'm not sure what his age was, but he was just beginning his walk with God. So he would have been what we would have called sort of an, an immature Christian, one that wasn't well-rooted and, and well-grounded in the faith. And, but, but here, when he's 100 years old and, and he's been dealing with God for a period of time, we, we, we would like to think that he would be at the height of his maturity spiritually. He ought to be in that place where we would say, well, he ought to have known better or she ought to have known better or, or whatever the case is. But, but what we find out is as we read this passage of Scripture, and when we get down into verses 12 and verse 13, is we find out that this sin that he is dealing with in this passage of Scripture is a sin that he has been carrying around not for a few days or weeks or months, but for decades. Sin does not have an expiration date. Sin is not one of those things that we can just leave alone and, 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 and finally it'll, it'll just go away and it'll just, it'll just disappear. So the point for us tonight is, is, is vividly clear. And, and that point is there will never be a time. You say, thanks for the encouragement, Pastor. There will never be a time that we will be beyond failing. That time will not come. You say, well, i take that back. That time will come. It just doesn't come during this life. It comes when we get to glory. But, but as long as we're on this side and as long as we're walking through this world, we need to be careful. You see, what we need to do is we need to avoid some of the mistakes that Abraham made. And let, 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 me, let me give you two of them. One is this. Never stop trusting God to take care of you. Never stop trusting God to take care of you. Now, if, 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 we, if we ask this, we would say, well, why is Abraham there in the first place? Why is he in Egypt the, in, to begin with? Well, if we go back to chapter 12, why did he go down to Egypt the first time? There was a famine, remember? And he didn't trust God to take care of him. God had sent him to where he was. But a famine came there, so Abraham decided, well, if I'm going to take care and I'm going to provide for my family, and it all become about I, that he was going to have to go down to Egypt to take care of his family. 
Well, w the scripture does not explicitly point out on this occasion why that, that he goes down there, but in, this is just in my opinion, and this is not scripture. There's not a verse that will, that will point out. But in, 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 my, in my thinking, he was trying to get away from Sodom and Gomorrah. He's trying to get away because he is, he is probably thinking that all of this area would be, would, would be burned up. So regardless of the matter, when, when in our life, when we come to the place where we no longer trust God to take care of us, we're headed for trouble. We're headed for trouble. Second thing uh, uh, that we, we learn from Abraham here is never put yourself in the place of temptation. Never put yourself in the place of being tempted. Now, every one of us know, whether we will admit it or not, we know the things with which we struggle, don't we? I know where I struggle, and I'm pretty positive that you know in the areas that you struggle. So Scripture would teach us that we, that we don't need to put ourselves in a position or in a predicament, if, if that would be an applicable word, to be in a place of temptation. Keep ourselves from that very thing. Well, in Abraham's life here in this 20th chapter, he has a fear that some man will literally come and take his life. Somebody will come and kill him so, so that he could have Abraham's wife, whom he has asked to proclaim as, as his sister. Now, when he felt this fear, he was inclined to make up a lie about the situation in order to save his hide. He, he was not believing that God would take care of him. Now, my, my grandmother always told me this, and I, I know that it appears in Scripture, but, but she said, you know, don't, don't ever refer to anybody as a fool because you're in danger of hellfire. But I'm going to use that word tonight in, in this context. Only a fool will put himself or herself into a position where they're tempted and even dabble with sin and think that they can walk away unscathed and unharmed. Only, only, a, only a fool would, would, would do such a thing. Listen, if, if we know that we have a problem in a given area of our life, we're not very wise if we put ourselves in a place where we're tempted by that very thing. So Scripture tells us, don't put ourselves, teaches us by prayer, don't put yourself in a place of temptation. So if, if sin does not have an expiration date, then we, have to, we must never let our guard down. Never let your guard down. May we never think that we've arrived at a, at a certain place because we're in church work, because we've been a member of the church, because we've been this for, for a long, long time. Don't ever think that we've arrived at a place where we can't fall because we can. Scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter and the 12th verse, Therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. So we need to be careful. As long as we live in the flesh, we need to be careful, we need to be saved. So sin doesn't have an expiration date. Here's principle number two. Sin cannot overcome grace. Now that's a hallelujah statement right there. Sin cannot overcome grace. There's, there, there's a song out. I think a, a family group called the Hoppers sing it, and, and, and it, I think the title of it is, Grace Will Always Be Greater Than Sin. And I'm telling you, it's true. Grace will always be greater. Here, here's Abraham. He, when, when he gets to this juncture of his life, he goes down to Egypt. We can safely say that he is, that he is clearly out of the will of God. He is not where God wants him to be. He's not necessarily doing what God wants him to be doing. He's not in the place where God wants him to be. But he is still enjoying God's provision. He's still enjoying the blessings of God. Now, now the, 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 the deal is, in, 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 if, if we were to follow this out and we were to sort of document this through Scripture, we would find out 
several things through this passage of Scripture that we read tonight that, that point this out to us. In, in verse number 17, it implies that, that God forgives Abraham of his wrongdoings. In, in, in the second through the ninth verse, and then down in the 18th verse, it, it tells us again that God protects Abraham from harm. In the 14th, 15th, and 16th verses, it tells us that God blesses Abraham financially. In the 17th and into the 18th verse, it tells us that God uses Abraham for his glory. We can document about the same, the same four or five things out of the life of Elijah in 1 Kings, the 19th chapter, in that, in that grace always overcomes sin. And, and, and listen, what, what, what does this teach us? It teaches us the truth that who we are in Christ is not undone by sin. Aren't you glad of that? Aren't you glad that, that sin does not, does not invalidate our, our, our faith in God? Now, we all know, Scripture teaches us this. We know that God chastens His children. And we know that because Scripture says so. Scripture says in Revelation 3:19, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. The Scripture says in Hebrews 12 and 6, for whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. But now, now many of us could testify, and, and we could stand tonight and give testimony of the fact that there have been times in our life when we were miles away from God. But even though we were miles away from God, he still blessed our lives because sin will all, grace will always overcome sin grace is always bigger than sin and, and, and listen the scripture gives us this in revelation in, in romans the eighth chapter verse 38 and 39 paul comes out and he makes this statement he said he said i'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing. Remember what it says next? Shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So even our sin, and we still sin as believers, don't we? Abraham still sins as a, as a believer, one who's been declared righteous by God. But, but, but even in our sin, that sin is unable to separate us from the love that we have in and through Jesus Christ. So if we need some good news tonight, one, this is not good news, but it's just a fact. We're all sinners. And the good news is, is, is that our sin, can, uh, sin cannot overcome His grace. Bless God for that. Here's principle number three. Sin can't derail the plan of God. Sin cannot derail the plan of God or God's plan as it's printed for you there. Now, when Abraham <coughs> left the promised land to enter Gerar, he, he placed what, what we would say is he placed the plan of God in jeopardy because God had promised to send the promised seed within a year back in the back in the 18th chapter I believe it is beginning with the 10th verse he said I will certainly return to you according to the time of life and behold Sarah your wife shall have a son Sarah was eavesdropping and listening in the tent door which was behind him and now Abraham and Sarah they were old well advanced in age and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing therefore Sarah laughed within herself saying after I've grown old shall I have pleasure uh, my Lord being old also and the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? And uh, shall I surely bear a child since I'm old? Is, and, and then he poses that question, is anything too hard for the Lord? At that appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and, and Sarah shall, shall have a son. Well, Abraham, he shows very poor judgment. If, if, if Abimelech had been allowed to sleep with Sarah, it could have in our thinking, it could have short-circuited the plan of God. But, but the Scriptures tell us that God prevented that from happening. God, Abraham didn't prevent it from happening. Sarah didn't prevent it from happening. God did. So what does that tell us? Listen, we, we all have sin in our life. And I, I believe this about the will of God. 
I believe that God has two sorts of a will. I believe that he has a sovereign will. And in God's sovereign will, there's nothing you nor I can say or do that will affect it in any way, shape, form, or fashion. But I also believe God has a permissive will. And in God's permissive will, he allows us to make decisions, and he allows us choices to make. And, and those choices, they, they affect some of the courses of our life and some of the things we do and some of the places that we wind up. But, 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 but in, in the big picture of this thing, sin does not derail the sovereign plan of a holy God. It, 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 it just doesn't. So, so I, I believe this, that, that regardless of what I may or may not do, God's plan will be accomplished because God's plan and God's work is so much bigger than Steve Coward or Jess Brooks or, or any of the rest of us in here. God's plan is so big and God's plan is so massive. Sin in my life is not going to derail the plan of God. So, so, so we see sin doesn't have an expiration date. Sin cannot overcome grace. Sin does not derail the plan of God. And the fourth one is this. Sin wears the emperor's clothes. Now, you've got to know what that old saying means for this to make any sense. Sin wears the emperor's clothes. In, in the story of the emperor's new suit, sin, sin is, is, is just like that. It, it, it attempts to camouflage itself. It attempts to pretend that it's something else, but, but, but it never, even when sin is, is camouflaging itself, it never realizes that, that its camouflage is flimsy. It, it, it's weak and, and it's transparent. Everybody can see through the camouflage usually except the person who is trying to camouflage something in their life. Well, Sin, sin is much like that. Here, here in Abraham's life, when Abraham is confronted by his sin, he doesn't repent. He, he, doesn't, he, he doesn't fall in, 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 in shame and ask to be restored. Instead, what does he do? He does what almost all of us do. He offered up excuses. He says, Here, here's why these things happen. You, you, you go back through it, you go down to verse 11, and, and he claims that he's acted out of fear. You get down to verse 12, and, and, and we find out that he's twisted the facts. Sarah was his sister, but, but, but she was more than that. She was his wife. Then you get down to verse 13, and, and he hides behind his past failures and things that have been going on for probably decades because he tells the king, he says, hey, this is the way we've always done it. When we sin and we're found out, and sin will always find us out. We'll always be found out eventually. But when that happens, we, 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 we always try to offer up excuses. And we blame somebody or we blame the devil and, and we try to pretend that we didn't do anything wrong. Sometimes we, sometimes we plead ignorant. Sometimes we act like we, we, we don't see anything wrong with, what our, what, with our actions. And, and, and there are thousands of different ways that we, that, that we do this, but there's only one way that will bring cleansing, and that's to repent of our sin. And ask for the sin to be, to be covered by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We can pretend it's not there, but it's there. We can pretend we acted out of fear, but it's still, it's still there. We can pretend that we didn't know, but it's, it, it, it's still there. Listen, the Bible says in Proverbs 28, 13, He who covers his sin won't prosper. Scripture says in 1 John 1, 9, 1, 9, if we confess our sin, what is he? He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we could ask ourselves tonight, what's, what's, the, what's the best way? And listen, we're, we're all sinners. We, we can play like we're not or we can wear the emperor's clothes and pretend we're not, but we're all sinners. What's the best way to handle the sin that I have in my life? Camouflage it like it's not there and pretend or, or however we want to do that or, or just repent of it and get it right with God. I'll, I'll tell you, it's best to repent of it and get it right with God. I wish I could tell you 
that we just come to this place and yeah I, I know that I've told you this before that growing up as a boy and I'd hear the preacher preaching and he'd talk about sin church I grew up in the parsonage was just is probably from one corner of the church building to the corner of his house probably wasn't 50 feet away and I thought that when he talked about sin I thought what in the world does he know about sin He's a preacher, for goodness sake. He can't sin. I thought it was like he went home from church and he stepped into this little old bubble of some sort and somebody zipped it up and he didn't hear anything bad. He didn't see anything bad. He didn't say. He's kind of like old Colonel, uh, what was the guy on Hogan Heroes? The other one. The, the, the guard. I knew nothing. I see nothing. That's what I thought of the preacher. You know what I found out over the past 30 years? The preacher does see sin. The preacher's tempted by sin. The preacher's all those kind of things, as are all the people of God. And we just have a choice of how we're going to take care of our sin. We can pretend we no part of it, or we can bring it before the Lord, and we can receive His forgiveness. Even when sin wears the emperor's clothes, it's still sin. It's still sin, brethren. And, and, and I'm telling you tonight, I, I, I would that I could tell you that, you know, it's, it, there's something we don't have to worry about anymore. It's something we don't have to guard against anymore. But it's, it's forever here until Jesus comes and takes us out of this world. So sin in the life of saint of God something that we need to pay attention to and, and we need to be careful of some of the places that we put ourselves some of the decisions that that we that, that we put ourselves in and you know there's a and, and I know we're an older group tonight but you know there are a lot of things I, I remember I was just a boy and I remember when when they I don't know if this was a city deal but I remember when they, when they made them put the naked magazines, when they made them put them up on the top and all you could see was the title of them. I, I remember that happening. And I'm, I'm just a little old bitty boy, and I knew what those things were. I didn't know what it all meant, but I, I knew that was something that I wasn't supposed to be any part of. But, you know, where I, even as a always looked up there at the top, and I'm going to tell you, brethren, today, we don't have to go down to the corner store. We don't have to go to a bookstore. We don't have to go to a fantasy shop. We, we, uh, almost, I'm going to say all of us, we'll go home tonight, and we have a little bitty thing that we'll hold in our hand probably before we go to bed. It's about Mine's about an inch and a half wide and about, I don't know, six, seven inches long, and its initials are R.C., and it's not Royal Crown Cola. It's remote control. And I'm telling you, there's buttons on that remote control that will carry Steve Cowart to places that Steve Cowart does not need to go. And I can sit down with my laptop or I can sit down there with my iPad and just by the click of a button, I can go to places that are forbidden. The brother sin is a part of the life of a saint of God. And we need to be encouraged, whether it be what we would label as deep, dark sin or what we would label as little white lies, we call them sometimes, regardless of the level, with God, sin is just sin. And we need to realize tonight, while we all do sin and we need, to, we need our sins to be forgiven, Aren't you thankful that, that failure and sin, are, it's not final? It, it, it doesn't doom us. And that, that we have forgiveness and, we're, and we can be raised to walk again. We can, we can follow some of these great saints of God. Abraham's one of them. David's one of them. Paul's one of them. Men of God who walked with God fell and they got back up and God restored them and they walked again. Aren't you thankful? 
Man, if we had been doomed by, by sin and, and by failure in our life, uh, most of us wouldn't be here tonight. We'd, we'd been left on the side of the road somewhere back yonder. But bless God, he picks us up, cleans us up, and uses us again. And if that's you tonight, he'll reach down and he'll pick you up. And he'll lift you up and he'll point you in the right direction once again and help you to walk in that direction. That's just a part of the goodness and the mercy and the faithfulness and the love of God. That's the business he's in. Heard the, heard the old analogy most of my life about a, about a chicken that, that gets sick or injured. What do the other chickens do to one that's sicker? Peck him. The, I, I hear I've never had chickens. I've eaten my share. I never had them. I, I hear that they just peck the sick one until he's dead. And if we're not careful, we do that in the church. We, we hear something and we just peck, 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 peck. We'll even go around and say, I don't know if this is true or not, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Peck, 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 peck. That's not his way. And it oughtn't to be our way. Now, sin is hard enough when we just have to deal with it out there in the world. When we begin to bring it in here, and we're not any different than the world out there, we're, we're, in, a, we're in a mess. And tonight, I, I think, I wasn't here the other night, Jim, but Jim made a comment about it the other day. He, he gave his testimony at the men's thing a week and a half ago. And he told me if I'd have been there, I would have probably had him kicked out of the church. So I don't know what all he said, but... And Dally had some things back yonder that's less than flattering. And Jim, I just have a feeling that every one of us in this room, we've got some of those things somewhere back yonder. But God has forgiven. And God has lifted us. God has restored us. And we give him praise and glory for it. And he's still in that business. He's still in that business of doing that very same thing today. And if we're struggling with something tonight, he wants to do that for you. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for showing us through your word. Even when O Abraham, he goes down for a second visit into that place that represented sin. It represented a place where he was away from you. But Lord, even then you, you watched over him. You took care of him when he wasn't willing or able to take care of himself. You, you, you took care of him. And, Lord, you've done the same with us. And, Lord, tonight as we come to the close of this service, and I, I, have, I have trouble enough just dealing with the, with the shortcomings of my own life. And, Lord, if there's, if there's something in our life that's less than pleasing to you, if there's something in our life that, that, that just ought not be, Lord, Lord help us tonight to, to get those things right with you. And Lord, help us realize that we're not ever going to get to the place where sin has gone away until we get to that place that you prepared for us where, where all those former things are going to be passed away. But while we're here, the struggle's on. So Lord, we can, we can rely upon you. And I pray that we can rely on each other as a family, as a church family for encouragement to help one another through the weary way and the tough way that we sometimes have to go. God, you raised Abraham up again, and you use him again. I pray tonight that if one of us are down, that we will take your hand that's extended to us and to get up and walk with you from this place forward. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and sing a verse of invitation. I lay my sins on Jesus, the spotless Lamb of God. He bears them all and frees us from the accursed Lord. I bring my guilt to to wash my crimson stains white in his blood most precious till not a stain remains I lay my 
once on Jesus, all fullness dwells in him. He heals all my diseases, he doth my soul redeem. I lay my griefs on Jesus, my burdens and my cares. He from them all releases. He all my sorrow shares. Amen. Most of you probably know yesterday afternoon about 2 o'clock we met over at Gilbert's house and uh, I had the privilege of of marrying or uniting in marriage. I didn't marry them. But uh, Gilbert and Gloria got married. And, uh, and Gloria wants to join the church. She's been saved. She's been baptized. Church at Baytown. Uh, don't have a way to get information from them. So we're going to do this by statement. Statement of her salvation. A statement of her baptism. And uh, she wants to uh, come here and, and worship with, with Gilbert and, and with the church family uh, here. So uh, I, was, I was yesterday, I, was, I got there a little bit before 2, I got there about 1.30, and uh, they were cooking out back and cooking in the kitchen, and, and Gilbert, had, I think, just got out of the shower. He come in in a T-shirt, and uh, we're sitting in the living room talking, and I, and I had my phone in my hand, and I text Donna. And I said, well, it was about, it was about 2 o'clock by then. I said, well, the wedding ain't going to start at 2. I said, we have a groom and a preacher, but we don't have a bride. And she was across the street getting her hair fixed. But, uh, but she come in, and, uh, and, and, and I, I remember this statement, Gilbert. I heard this statement from your family. I, I talked to Randy uh, a week ago today at lunch. I ran into him, and and, uh, and we were talking about that, and, and he made this statement, and it was made again yesterday, about how thankful that they are, that their daddy's happy. And, 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 and I'm going to tell you, I, did, I didn't know you when, you when your wife passed away a number of years ago, but from everything I hear, this man was faithful to his wife. And I'll tell you, I was here. He was faithful to his daughter and her sickness, and he deserves to be happy. And we deserve to congratulate. We, we need to congratulate him and her and their life together and their, and their happiness. So, so we, we're, we're glad to have Gloria as a part of our church. And uh, she'll be at, back there at the, at the door with me and Gilbert will come with her. And uh, if you pick on her, he's going to hit you in the nose. So, uh, and, and if he can't, I'll do it. I'll do it for you, Gilbert, if, if you can't. And, uh, and we'll, we'll do it with the love of Jesus in our heart, but we'll, we'll do it just the same. And, uh, but anyway, anyway, so we're happy, happy for them and, uh, and uh, uh, just we wish, wish, them, wish them the very best. Any, anything we need to mention? There's a note in your bulletin today about an upcoming birthday, a 90th birthday for Merle Jones. It's the 23rd, 23rd of March. So uh, it's going to be here at the church, and uh, you're going you're gonna to be invited. We'll mention it between now and then and uh, remind you of it, but, uh, but keep that in mind as uh, something that's coming up here. And, uh, you know, th thank the Lord it, it has not really rained now in 24 hours, and maybe 24 more hours before it rains again, but rain's coming. Four days of it this week, they say. So, so hang on, the drought's almost broken. And, uh, and, and we'll, be, we'll be back to the... Back to some more rain in, uh, in good old East Texas. All right, any word before we dismiss? Praise God, amen. That's right, any, anything. If not, let's bow together. Ask the Lord's blessings. Jess Brooks, would you dismiss us, please, sir?